Hey, hey, everybody, I hope you're doing well today. Well, let's take a look at the government budget. And this is the amount of money that, you, that the, any government would have at its discretion at any given time. And of course, they create the budget by extracting taxes from society, and then they spend the money right, by use of government spending. And the result is, so revenue is taxes, right? Expenditure is government spending. If they extract more than they spend, then there's a surplus. And if they extract more, less than they spend, then there's a deficit. And a deficit will lead to a long-term debt. Okay, so we're going to talk about how the government budget is made up of revenue coming in, that is extraction, or the fiscal policy that takes money out of people's and firms' pockets and puts it into the government pocket. Then they spend that, and what they spend it on will result, or how much they spend, will result in surpluses or deficits, and that'll have long-term effects. Okay, so that's what we're going to focus on when we say the government budget. First of all, let's talk about the sources of revenue. Okay, the main idea here is this is how the government raises money. And there are three main, uh, they're really just two, but the three ways in which, the, well, there are many ways the government can actually receive money. But tax revenue is the primary source of revenue. This is where, whether you go and you buy something and it's a consumption tax, which is an indirect tax, when you go buy something at the store, there's a sales tax or a value-added tax, that's tax revenue or direct tax they're all taxes. And this, of course, is the main source of revenue for any government. What are they? Well, like I just said, they're direct taxes, which are taxes on incomes. That can be an income of a household or income, income of a firm. And they're usually progressive in nature, which is mean the more that you earn, the more tax percentage tax you pay. And the less that you earn, the less percentage that you pay. But either way, um, this is one way in which the government earns money. The other way is an indirect tax which is their taxes on consumption, right? And so that means that they're usually paid by, they're almost always paid by the firm themselves. So you go to the store, you pay a sales tax, you pay a value-added tax, like here in Chile, it's 19%. You go to the grocery store, you buy something for, for, for whatever, 10,000 pesos, well, 19% of that 10,000 pesos, or 1,900 pesos, is actually taxed. And at the end of the month, the grocery store is going to have to send that 1,900 pesos pesos to the government, okay? So that's the revenue for the government. What are some other sources? Well, the sale of goods and services. Sometimes the government actually sells things, and that can be a source of revenue. The sale of government property, privatization of state-owned property. Those would all be other sources of income. And in the IB world and in most economic stuff, economic courses, this is not the primary source of revenue because these are sort of one-off things, right? They sell things, they sell, their, they sell property, or they privatize a state-owned company. Um, um, that, that's not, a, not really a revenue stream. So that leaves us up with, well, what types of expenditures are there? Well, this is the stuff government provides a nation. And so they, they spend money in order to provide things for a nation, just like a parent would spend money to provide things for a household. And there, there are three different kinds of expenditures. There's a current expenditure, capital expenditures, and then transfer payments. And current expenditures are the things that they do currently. And I know that doesn't necessarily like, really make that much sense, but that's what I think of it. What does the government do every day? Well, they pay their workers. Okay. Um, they pay for the lights at a school. They, these are all of the things that governments pay for, teachers, legislation, military, judges. This is the wages and salaries of all public employees. These are the current expenditures that are, like, go on all of the time as opposed to capital expenditures, which are mainly spent on infrastructure, roads, bridges, schools, hospitals, ports, you name it, right, parks. Um, that's another kind of thing that the government spends money on. And then another kind of expenditure is really just a transfer payment. And these transfer payments, remember, a transfer payment, there's no actual economic transaction, right? The money is really transferred from one group of people in society to another. And an example of this would be like welfare and unemployment benefits. Where does that money come from? Well, it comes from taxes extracted from uh, people who are working, and then it's redistributed to people who um, have lost their job or find themselves in a, in, a, in, a poorly, in a poor economic situation. Okay? So there we go. Those are the types of uh, revenue and then the types of expenditures. And then the last slide here is really where you're going to spend most of your time, because that was just sort of like straight vocabulary stuff. But surpluses and deficits, and, and this is a really nice slide to take a screenshot of and just sort of hold on to, I think. But the key idea here is that the aggregate demand, remember, aggregate demand is what's being affected by fiscal policy. Fiscal policy is a demand-side policy. 
So what the government does with its revenue, in other words, the way in which it spends money, will impact aggregate demand. And the kind of extraction or the level of extraction would also affect aggregate demand through a loss or gain of disposable income of people. Okay? So in the, in the big picture, right, a government's budget can either be balanced, it could be in surplus, or it can be a deficit. So let's go through each one of these. Well, a balanced budget simply means that expenditures equal revenues, which is to say that leakages, which are government expen ex ex expenses, right, are equal to injections. In other words, they extract, um, I'm sorry, I said it backwards. Leakages are the extraction of taxes and injections are government spending. When those equal each other, well, then, of course, the budget's going to be balanced, and then there has no net effect on aggregate demand. I think that's pretty, pretty straightforward. What's a budget surplus? Well, budget surplus is when revenues, so the, the, the tax revenue, the amount of money that the government is extracting with one side of its hammer, is greater than the expenditures of the other side of the hammer. So this is government spending and revenue. So revenues... That are when they bring when the government brings it's pretty straightforward. When the government brings in more money than it spends, then there's gonna be extra money left at the end of the year, and that's a surplus. Another way of saying that is leakages, which are tax revenues, are greater than the injections. And the net effect is that aggregate demand would actually be negative. And this would reduce um, the national debt. And many students say, like, oh well, a surplus kind of sounds like a good thing. But in reality, since leakages exceed uh, uh, injections, there's going to be more money leaving. So they're going to, they're extracting. That means, what that means is that people are losing more disposable income than the government is replacing with spending. And that's why the overall um, negative, the, the overall negative impact on aggregate demand is uh, negative. However, it would reduce the national debt. So the debt is, the debt is, uh, what the government owes after each year. So a debt is a continual thing. So if last year, if the government had a deficit, that would become the debt that they have to pay back this year. So think of deficit as tied to a year, and debt is like the overall um, amount of money the government might owe. Okay. So when the, obviously when there's a surplus, then they would be able to pay down that debt. And this is just to say, like if, if revenues are $100 and the expenditures are $80, which of course is absurd in terms of money, but revenues are $100, expenditures are $80, they would have 20 extra dollars to pay down the debt. Simple. Okay, budget deficit. This is when um, the government's expenditures in a year are greater than the tax revenue it collects. So revenues are less than expenditures. So it spends more than it collects. That means it's going to go in debt. You should see that already. So taxes are less than spending. Leakages are less than, than, than injections. And the net effect here is positive because the government is spending more than it's extracting. So the, the aggregate, the government spending will, be, will more than compensate for the lack of consumption as a result of people having less money in their pocket. And so this has a net effect of aggregate demand being positive. And this would, of course, increase the national debt because the government is, is spending more money than it makes. And then the national debt, and I'll just put this down here, is the sum of all past deficits and surpluses, right? All past deficits and surpluses, which is it, it negative means the, gover the government money, the government negative means that the government borrowed more money than it paid back. Of course, the debt is always negative because debt's when you owe someone else. So um, the debt is made up of multiple deficits. Debt is the sum of all past deficits and surpluses, you could say. All right, so there's an overview of government budget, how it works, the types of revenue it has, the types of expenditures it has, and then what that means in terms of surplus and deficits, and its overall impact on the long-term national debt of a nation. All right, my friends, I hope you found this video to be helpful. We'll talk to you in a bit.